Okay, so go down. Uh, oh yeah, so okay, it's refreshing. Okay. Good afternoon, um, Engineer Usak. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, so, okay, Tim. I uh, my name is Usage Kerete. I'm actually in the middle of presentation for the company. Uh, I have I have logged in. Uh, I will try to join up with another system. Uh, please give me some few minutes. Let let me complete the presentation I had already. Okay, Tim. Uh, and I, I will join up with the team soon. Please, uh, uh, is this uh, how many people do uh, I, have, I have logged in? Uh, I will try to join up with another system. Uh, please give me some few minutes. Okay. Th thank you very much, Captain. Okay. So, okay. So the, the last presentation was to show us how to escort. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, sir. Uh, we, we 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 don't have issues with that profile. What we want is effective utilization. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, while we wait for Engineer Usak to join us uh, quickly, I would like to introduce everyone to today's program, Safety, Accident Analysis, and Prevention. Uh, this, this program is powered by the Society of Petroleum Engineers, University of Lagos, uh, which is in collaboration with the industry discourse. Uh, today, our guest speaker is Engineer Dr. Ekerite Usak, MNSC and FNI uh, Meki, I'm not sure if I pronounced that well. Uh, he's a renowned and highly skilled mechanical engineer with broad experience in oil and gas production operations, safety, security, health and environment, and risk engineering. He has over 20 years of service in the oil and gas industry right here in Nigeria, and he has acquired hands on experience in process plant operations engineering technology, production planning, and process optimization, uh, facility and integrity and equipment reliability management systems, HSC management systems, and regulatory compliance, ASOPs and ASITs, process safety, and also facility technical risk assessments. Uh, today, we'll be taking us through how to analyze uh, accident scenarios, whether in the workplace or at home, Gen just a general overview and how to prevent that, uh, basically. So today it will be it will be speaking for about 40, 45 minutes. Then it will take uh, the questions afterwards. Uh, so if during this presentation, we will, if you have any question that is bothering you, uh, I would like you to just use the chat, the chat box so that we can just have a record of all the questions right there. So while we wait for uh, Mr. Uh, with, uh, for engineer Usak, let's just start. Um... Oh, oh, okay, team. Uh, hello. Hello, can somebody hear me? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, uh, a little apology. I have to join this meeting a little bit late. Uh, let me check. I want to join from another laptop. Let me check the the meeting ID. Uh, it's tossing around. It tossing, are you there? Hello. I am here. I'm here. Okay, please can you give me the meeting ID? I want to join from uh, the company laptop so I can use that for my presentation. Okay, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll send that to you right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, you okay, let me see the email. Uh, where is the email? I want to log on from another system. So I just sent it to you on Zoom. You, you sent it on text? Okay, yeah, I've seen it text, okay. Zoom. Okay, yes. thank you, Tosin. Yes, sir. All right, so uh, good day, sir. It's time to join meeting. That's what I've seen. Is it on text or chat? Tosin, did you send it as text or chat or what's up? I sent it via Zoom, Zoom chat. I don't know if that's... Okay, talk. Oh, where is chat here again? Ah. Oh. So, sometimes uh, we have a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, challenges with the with the internet. Okay, yeah, the meeting ID is uh, 872, 872. Yes, 1304. 1304. 9072, 9072. Okay. All right, so the passcode is 430, Okay, so I'm trying to join from uh, the computer. No. Okay. Good, good afternoon, team. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. So, uh, I, I don't know if there was any preamble. Uh, I don't know if there was any preamble. My name is. Uh, Ekereto Osak, by virtue of uh, academic qualification, I've sometimes been uh, referred to uh, engineer doctor. Uh, I thank the team, especially led by Tosin, uh, I guess is your chapter chairman or uh, president, for the desire that I should present uh, to you on accident analysis and prevention. Uh, due to COVID-19, uh, I have been faced with a lot of challenges in the company. I hope you can hear me. Uh, Tosin? Yes, 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 we can. Oh, okay. and clear, so. All right, okay. So I'm going to share screen and uh, I'll make a, a presentation. Yes, you've called it accident analysis and prevention, but uh, 
Oh, am I the one admitting people? <laughs> okay. Uh, you've called it accident analysis and prevention. Ah, uh, fine. Uh, Captain, uh, uh, no, sorry. Uh, Tosin. Tosin. Sir? I, I guess you are the one to do the the ac admitting of people. It yes, shouldn't yes, be I'm, me now. I'm doing that, I'm doing that. Okay, all right. So, let me make my slide known to us. Where is uh, my presentation? Okay. So did I present? No. So share screen. Hot disabled, who's disabled participant sharing screen. So captain, uh, oh God, why am I calling captain? <laughs> Just coming up from the presentation. Try, so try. allow me to share screen. Uh, yes, yes, I've done that. You can share now. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, so please, if you can see my screen, let me know. So, it's so when we talk about the, oh, it's coming up. So, so when we talk about the accident analysis or prevention, uh, for me, when I got this call from Tosin, I told myself I need to talk to Rose about investigating incident. Yes, you may see the word incident, but what he requested for was accident. We, I have come to the level in my years of experience to termine it as an incident. And the difference between incident and accident is basically that uh, accident are things that happens to us without any control. So we, we, we could not control what has happened to us. We call it an accident. It happened. There was nothing we could do about it. But you will agree with me that uh, for every sane personnel, every sane person, you cannot say that something happened to you without your knowledge about it. If you are a young man that wants to go to a party at night, then at the party, there is a fight that breaks up. I, we suppose that you should have been able to learn about what night party is all about, how the hoodlums, the hitmen and whatsoever can do at night. And you should have been able to tell yourself if I'm going to this night party, nothing bad can come upon me. I take another instance. In the event of you drinking, if you are a drinker, you should be able to tell yourself that a bottle of beer always gets me intoxicated. So by the time you are taking a glass, which is a pint, what we refer to in the UK as a pint, that contains about 0.5% alcohol, which is the minimum allowable and the maximum acceptable in times of test. I say minimum allowable for the blood, blood alcohol, alcoholic content and the maximum that can be seen. So if, if we are doing a test for alcohol and drug use and we find out that you tested above 5% of alcoholic content in your blood, we will say that you have taken more alcohol. But if you have to take up to that 5%, we will accept that that is normal in your blood system. So we call it incident in the fact that you have the full awareness within you. You have been trained, you've known about it, you've heard about it, you've learned about it anyway, and then you cannot go into that event and say that, ah, I did not know it would happen. If, if you have a wife, for instance, I'm sorry some of us are students, if you have a wife and your wife is pregnant, you cannot wake up one morning and say that you do not know that your wife will put to bed after nine months. There's the, the delivery date may, may vary, but you should have been aware that once it's getting to that period of nine months, two weeks before the deadline or two weeks after deadline, your wife should put to bed. So you must have been able to prepare for it so that the childbirth does not come to you as an accident. I, I hope I've made myself clear. So, so when, when you are analyzing what happened, we are telling you that you are investigating 
what happened, what you had control over, what, what you knew that I'm going out of my gate, the gate can be locked. So I don't come back and begin to knock the gate because I have the key. And if I fail to have the key, then I am responsible for what has happened to me. So when we call it incident in, in, the, in the right balance, we are telling people that you had full responsibilities for what happened to you. So, so talking about analysis, I go to my next slide, which is slide two. I'll try to send this to Tosin so you can send across to everybody. Now, now the purpose of investigating what happened is for us to get as much information that's analyzing what has happened and then identifying what we could do to prevent it from uh, happening again. So, so when, when you say you've analyzed an accident or an incident, so to speak, you are trying to look at what you can get on control over so that you can tell yourself, if going out at night is what will cause me to lose my leg, then I better not go out at night at all. So, so I have this acronym, LEN, if you can see on my screen. When, when we are analyzing an accident or an incident, so to speak, we are trying to learn from it. We are trying to learn from what has happened, the bad side of what happened, the good side of what happened, or the ugly side of whatsoever that we want to get. So the learning curve has to be there. And when we are learning, we look at what could have prevented it from happening. So, so we look at effective barriers. Those things, yes, I have gotten my hand severed off or amputated, but this could have stopped that hand from being severed off. Then you look at the next aspect, which is the A, actively carry. Now that my hand is cut off, in the pop, in the analysis of the analysis of these uh, events, we look at how best do I get the hand to stay where it is or not aggravated or get the best treatment so that even if the hand is the, the hand is going to go, then I won't feel too much bad about it. And people should take responsibilities. It, it, I shouldn't just say I have uh, learned from what happened. I've analyzed what happened. I need to tell somebody, daddy, by seven o'clock, make sure your gates are locked. Security man, don't let any of my child leave my house by seven, by six o'clock. So we take that responsibilities. And the purpose is that we don't want anybody to get injured. We don't want anybody to get injured. So that is the purpose of analyzing incident. We don't want what has happened before to reoccur again. So basically, there are three basic things that can allow an accident to happen. If you want to call it incident, you can call it. If you want to put it as accident, you can call it. So one, the equipment, the processes, and the people. For instance, I take uh, the, the, the vehicle accident, which some, sometimes they go in collaboration with the Federal Road Safety uh, Commission. I, I came up with this mindset that is uh, an auto crash and not an accident. So you may check in your road safety uh, 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 documents. You may not be seeing accident again, but you are seeing uh, uh, road crashes. The uh, road crashes is a waiver violation. That means I knew about it. I knew that my car can hit the other car and I went on to hit the guy. The, the guy that just caught uh, uh, the, uh, the youngest lady that was uh, uh, a, 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 a pilot, the Bombardier pilot uh, got her killed. He, he, you can see that when, when he, he gets to court, they are going to tame it as a willful act. So crashing is a willful act. That means the driver cannot say it's an incident. The driver cannot say he did not know he will hit the lady. So he knew about it. So when we look at the equipment, we are looking at what failed in the equipment. Is it the brakes? Is it the uh, lining? Uh, is it the tires or is it the steering? Uh, so those, those are what we want to look at, that it felt while we are analyzing incident. Then we look at processes. Do we give the vehicle to the right driver? Did the driver have 
the right permit to drive. So we can also look at the people in which case, in the case that I've just mentioned, the vehicle was okay, he was licensed to drive, but it took him as an individual, where we say, when asked, what we refer to accident, when it happens, it is individuals that are vulnerable. So they are, at, uh, 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 they are the ones that are at fault. But I'll get on with this presentation to tell you that it's not, a, it's not all about the fault. So we, we look at what could have happened to any other person. So we want to see what fell in the equipment, the, the, the tank, the processing unit, what, uh, the, the, the tankers, the, the separators, the diffractionation uh, 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 tank, and all those equipment and processes. Did we know that it was going to fail? Did we let people know about it? Have we told them about it? Have we trained them properly? Are they aware of what they need to do to prevent it from happening? Then finally, even if they were not told about it, we hired a graduate of petroleum engineering to work in a petroleum facility. Why did he allow the crude to become something that killed him or injured him? So we want to look at these three things and say, yeah, we are able to stop the equipment from failing, uh, make sure that our processes are working fine and we have the right set of people with the right frame of mind. So that is the purpose of investigation or analyzing incident. So, so what we are doing with analyzing incident is I want to check if they were, the, what you see as X here, we are saying that there are some holes in our, that is, there are some issues that we could not address that has failed simultaneously and that accident happened. So, so a good incident or near miss investigation will be able to tell us what happened, why it happened, and what we are going to do to prevent it from happening again. So what we are saying is that well, what we are going to do to prevent it from happening again is to close those lapses, those gaps in our equipment, our processes, and our people. So uh, are you with me? Do you, do you find this interesting at the first instance? Yes, yes. Lovely, lovely presentation, sir. Okay, okay. so uh, thank you. So next, what are we actually investigating? In the industry, we talk about occupational illnesses or injuries. So if someone is injured or is ill as a result of the asbestos that is working in the asbestos frame, we need to find out why. We need to analyze and come up with how we can prevent individuals from getting injured or ill from that aspect. If there are fires, there are explosions, there are gas or liquid releases, this uh, is, uh, pertains to process safety and as petroleum engineers to be or that are already, this, is, this ranks priority in our daily life on the industry. So you need to find out why, you know, in petroleum, we don't want it to be seen on the atmosphere because of the atmospheric effect, the pollution and the attendant effect. So we want to find out if one should come out to the atmosphere, why did it happen? Because it has a lot of untold uh, events. So if there are things that came up as well, we don't want it to touch the environment. And what we will say that your, your environment is your greatest asset. Though in the industry, we say people is the greatest asset, but the environment is where the industry is seated. So before people can get to the environment or the industry, if that environment was not in, in existence, then there was no point going there to work. So if, if, for instance, your house, there's no place that you can sleep which is better than your own home or house. So if the house is on fire, if something has damaged the house, you want to find out why, because you don't have any other place to go to. We also talk about property. My laptop, if it is bad now, I can't make this presentation. Your hand said, if it is bad now, you cannot join this presentation. So if anything should happen to it, you need to investigate and analyze what happened, why it happened. So uh, if we are into business, you used to, like for instance, we have COVID-19 now, you used to import materials from China to carry out your business. So if COVID-19 should come, you need to find out why. Why am I not able to make my business? You investigate that as an accident and analyze it to prevent it from happening again. I believe 
in, in Nigeria, in the world today, if we realize that COVID-19 will come back in June next year, then we will have been able to put up better ways of managing the pandemic. So if you also realize that vehicles or the, 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 the boats, the motor vessels, the crew vessels that we use to go offshore to do most of our activities as petroleum engineers, the, the rig, if it is damaged or anything happens, we need to find a way of analyzing what happened so that we can learn from it we can find barriers to prevent it from reoccurring again. So we also look at things that had potential to cause any of this from happening. So even when occupational illness is not coming, but there was potential, there's that likelihood that it could have happened. We need to investigate that and analyze them. Now, sometimes there are some people that when they are done, they can go to court with you. If you remember the Occidental Petroleum, that the entire platform went subsea. So people went to court and got some, a lot of damages. So you need to look at in, the, in my business, in my activity, should something happen and I'm taken to court, how will I be able to respond to it as it's still a floating business? So analyzing uh, incident, investigating them will help us to ensure that we are able to stay to our business and continue to protect and perform uh, incident. Uh, businesses. So analysis, the objective is that we don't need to look at what has just happened. We call it the tip of the iceberg. You know, if you see the iceberg, the ship may crash on the top, but there are a lot of underlying uh, factors. There are a lot of things that, that has happened under that we may probably not have been able to see. So analyzing and investigating helps you to look at what are the underlying principles. Sometimes in the industry, we refer to them as root causes. And when we say root causes, we refer to what management can control to prevent a thing from reoccurrence. Remember the effective barriers? So what can management do to bring out defective barriers that can prevent equipment or process or people from getting injured? So always look at analysis as an improvement opportunity to make things happen. So like we will say in conflict management, conflict resolution, we say that when conflict arises, it gives us better understanding and ability to appreciate what is going on in our lives. So look at it that way that at the end of the event that happened, the accident that happened, the incident, we are trying to make do a better way of going on with that uh, uh, occurrence. So an, an, an example of getting to analyze uh, an event or accident is that you probably must have had an alert. You, you hear it as a news break. You hear in the industry, you heard the alarms or, or you got the information that a particular site has been shut down because of this or that. Like in case of COVID-19, you hear the reports, America 2000 cases today and things like that. So when this happens, what you need to do is to get help immediately. And getting help, you are interested in people that are working there. People are the greatest asset. I have some years of experience to talk to us in this manner. If something happened this morning, I'm not able to talk. This meeting cannot hold. And if this meeting does not hold, it looks as if your organizers did not do much job. So you want to be sure that I'm able to come back for this meeting if we reschedule, or I'm able to hold this meeting as at schedule. So, so you get help immediately, help the people to be stable. They will come back again. If I was injured after a few days, I'm stable. I can come back and talk to us. But if I cannot come back again, I'm very sure you may not be happy with the fact that the next person will be able to make the presentation. So if, if, if an individual was injured, you need to provide care, take him to the best hospital, get him treated, is the one that will add value to the investigation process, is the one that will come back and say, look, this is where I screwed up and I'm able to make amends in the next uh, uh, dispensation. So when, when something happens, you need to let people know about it. The leaders of the industry, when they know about it, you need to go with the person that was injured to the hospital for treatment. 
uh, and you, you need to find a way of investigating and analyzing this incident, get pictures, get statements. Uh, if you may think alcohol was an issue, we need to conduct a text to ensure that the individual was not under the influence of alcohol or drugs. So, so if, if the man is back to work, you need to restrain him for doing some activities that led to that incident. So then you come up with the report for people to learn from. And after the incident, you get to the person and provide him the necessary support and care to help him with, this present, with the uh, analysis. So looking at some basic divination in the industry, injuries are any cut fracture, sprain, or anything that, will, that has happened to the, the, the person. An illness must be ascertained to have occurred because of the kind of work that he's doing. So we always talk to illness as work-related. So for instance, uh, I am working on an, in an asbestos or industry. If I have pains in my leg, I need to be sure that the pains is as a result of the asbestos. If I have asbestosis, the lung disease that has to do with asbestos inhalation, then I should be able to tell myself that that one is work related and I can be treated as such. But if I come to work there and I now begin to say that I can't see and there was no dust or anything that would stop me from seeing, then it is not a work related uh, accident or incident. Please, if I'm going too fast, you let me know. I, I don't mind sending us the slide, but I want us to understand briefly and perfectly what I'm talking about. So, so why do we need to define issues when it happens? Is because if you don't get a first aid treatment as a first aid treatment, you may want to give a lot of, uh, of uh, responsibilities or attention to something that was not uh, necessary. So things we call first aid are things that will take some few hours or even days to heal. So you may not want to take cognizance of that in investigating or analyzing incident but things that you need to take to a professional medical treatment or things that the guy who was uh, hired as a driver may need to be in the office to keep record of drivers that have left the office for a particular work. So, so the need to have this classification is very, very important. And uh, if someone dies, that means the person cannot come back to work again. So we say the person has lost the time to do work and we call it lost time incident. So these are a, a few examples of that I can lay hands to. So uh, in, in a no treatment where the person had injuries or, or fell or had an accident, but there was nothing for you to treat. So, so, so that is it. Uh, and first it include part of foreign body that, that can be removed from the body, like the pin or, or the twisters that are used to maybe take out the, the small uh, hot from a bone or a stick. So these are part of uh, what you can refer to as examples of in, in incident. So the, why do we need to accompany the, the, the injured person to the treatment center? Because our priority is always to care for the individual. The person needs to come back and work. He, he, he remember, he has passed through the university degree. He has the best uh, record in the aptitude test. He has been employed. We, we know he was going to give us a whole lot of satisfaction from that process of employment. And uh, somehow uh, he, he might not be able to, to, we may not be able to replace him. So it's also difficult for us to bring someone back to work when he has, is gone. So we need to look at how best to care for this individual. So when the person is back from uh, the injury, we need to find a way of getting him to integrate back into the company as, as uh, appropriate. Uh, some of the issues while analyzing incident, uh, incident or near misses is that uh, as leaders of the industries, we, we need to know how to manage what has happened, our strengths and weaknesses. If we did not pro provide the proper medical ass assessment, or you do not give the right work limitations. These are some of the showstoppers. If you do not classify what happened properly, or you do not have the right relationship with the people that are providing the care. So this can be a very big issue for 
managing the uh, uh, incident that happened. So uh, some of these are, if, if we fail in providing medical care, the individual may not receive proper care and uh, we may not be able to get him back on time. So if, if we were not clear about the work limitation, so you can have that the guy that was having injuries on the hand is asked to go and lift an equipment. So these are part of the uh, pitfalls in managing or analyzing the uh, uh, incident. Then if a contractor is involved with us, we need to manage it and ensure that their own expectation is in line with the company, the employing company uh, specification. So, so having said that, uh, I, I want to let us know that if you are working in the industry, everything that has happened in the industry has to be investigated and analyzed. So don't begin to think that this one is small, this one is big, this one needs to or not. Everything, even in our personal life. Uh, I, I, I happen to work and I have a salary of so so and so amount and every month the money has finished before the next salary. You can analyze what has happened and use that to beef up your next month so that you don't go out of a salary before the end of the month. Then remember that if, if you are working for a company, the department that uh, the events happen is responsible for finding out or analyzing what happened. So that is safety related, the personal issue, security, environmental equipment damage and all. And the important thing is that if we can uh, go on to find out what happened, analyze all, we probably will end up with uh, analyzing 80% of what has happened in the industry. If you have done the uh, QA, QC in the, in, the, uh, in the school, you realize that if we do a 100% uh, inspection, then probably about 15 to 20% is faulty. So looking at having 100% investigation of all analysis of all accidents, we probably must have been able to effectively do well for 80% of what happened in the industry. So once you are out with the analysis, you must have to come and give a report. This report is what we are going to use to share and the report must carry appropriate information about what happened then in writing your report, don't use jargons or inflammatory words uh, and don't use verbose analysis or gravitative words like uh, calling a small fall catastrophic and things like that. So whenever you're finished with analysis, you will have come up with solutions. Uh, and these solutions, you need to go back and check, does the solution meet what we intended for? So has the solution been implemented? Has it met what we wanted? And if it has met, then we need to get back and say, yes, keep on with this kind of solution and, and then let others know about it. But if it does not, we need to come back again and say, ah, the, the solution we intended for has not stopped it. Let's improve by this way or the other. So this is very important step in analyzing uh, what happened in the industry. So our, our expectation is that uh, we should be able to come up with key expectations that says, look for whatever happened in our facilities, in our office. A lot of schools abroad have actually had incident management expectations. So you have to set up uh, your expectation. And to, like I said earlier on why we started, the best way to manage or analyze an incident is to prevent it from happening. So that way, I say, if you can tighten controls, the key, if you, can, if you can prevent it from happening in the first instance, then you've done the best analysis in your incident management or analysis. So what, what you have here is just uh, in the event something happened in your facility or work, workplace, then you need to look at it. Is it of a low severity? It does not mean you cannot investigate, but you are saying that, well, I lose a, a one naira out of a million naira. It does not cost me a thing. But by the time I lose 800,000 out of a million naira, I know it is something I need to go for and find out what actually happened. Then remember, 
it is the business line that is uh, responsible for finding out what happened. So uh, with that, uh, you, what do you need to do as an individual? So in managing and, uh, and uh, analyzing what happened as an individual, you need to move into action wherever you're working, in your office, in your home, manage whatever happened in line with my expectation and take care of an individual if he's injured. Do not wait to say he, 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 he's not part of my family, he, he's not a, a member of my school, uh, he, we are not close together, I don't want to. So all you need to do is something, that, something bad has happened, it has affected an individual, you give that person the utmost care. And, and if you can do that, then uh, you, you can be asking yourself after this presentation, what am I going to do differently? Part of which is that your job will be to prevent something from happening. Again, I, I will always say it is easier to say what you did right than to explain what was wrong from your action. So if you can start from today to do something right, if you are getting to the industry, you remember this, what we call the personal protective equipment, you put it on ahead of time. Before you touch that equipment, you ask yourself, am I going to get injured? Will I need to be a subject of analysis where people will come and ask me questions? What did I do wrong or what did I do right? So if you can put all these things in the right perspective, then you are surely managing or analyzing what will have happened. So you are going ahead to think of that accident that never happened. And like I said, one of the things I call near misses is that the accident never happened, but it could have happened. So if those accidents never happened, but it had the likelihood of happening, and I've taken proactive steps to prevent it from happening, then I've actually managed that accident and analyzed it for effectiveness. Then analysis of accident cannot be complete until you've been able to let others know what you did. We I talked about the documentation of what happened. So on this point, uh, I believe uh, I have, in addition to my busy work schedule, been able to let us know that the, in, in uh, discussing accident prevention and analysis, we are actually talking about our ability to learn from what has happened and prevent it from happening in the future. So uh, I hope I've been able to do justice to your, your topic. Uh, thank you for the audience, and I will be able to take some questions at the end of this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Usak. Thank you very much for your time. So now that he, you. Has, he has completed this uh, presentation, does anybody have a question or uh, whatever that may be bothering you? You can simply raise your hand or put it in the chat section. Should that? Engineer Usa, at least he, before he leaves us, he can provide us with a suitable answer. Uh, you, you want to omit all and uh, ah, so that anybody that, can speak. I think they are all muted. They are all, they, they are all muted. Unmute, unmute all. Okay. Uh, uh, unmute all. Okay. So. Tim, I, I hope you were participating in my discussion. Uh, this is uh, one o'clock. I have another presentation to make in the office by two. But I think I have another 10, 15 minutes to attend to any of our questions. So the summary is that uh, for you to analyze an accident, it is best for you to prevent it from happening. So your best tools for analyzing accident is for you to take safe actions, think through what you want to do. And when you get to that level of something bad happening, <coughs> okay, somebody's asking question. Okay, did anybody, uh, is there any question or 
Okay. Okay, so I ha I have a question. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so for some of okay, so for some students that wish to become safety officers or HSC practitioners later in the future, what are the HSC certifications that you would, you would, you would advise them to start looking into right from now or start planning towards huh? getting? Did you get that? Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, That's he's awesome. asking for... Uh, okay, go ahead. You want to speak again? No, no, so no. I your basic... Uh, your basic qualifications or training that you require... Uh, everybody's speaking at the same time. Okay, I, I don't know who asked the questions. I can't get it. But the basics for you to attain the level of uh, professionalism in uh, safety applications and professional uh, management is first, the degree does not count. What matters is the passion. You do hear me? You need to have passions yes, for life. Now, in the event, we know that in, in, in the workplace, qualification does count. But I can tell you that if you have level one, HSC, two and three, then you are well up to uh, being employed. But on the other hand, if you can graduate with your basic uh, degree, uh, BSc in petroleum, and even have higher qualification, you, you are better exposed to looking at safety in the perspective of a professional and not in the perspective of somebody that has certification. I say it this, this way. It, it, in engineering, as we are all aware, for petroleum, there's always what we call factor of safety. So the, the professional is already factoring, uh, factoring uh, safety into what he's doing. So if you want to live here and say, I want to work as a safety officer, yes, you can have the NEBOS, you can have the uh, IOSH, you can have the certified safety practitioner, but you must have passion. So those ones are just attributes to getting you the job. But as a graduate of petroleum engineer, I bet you, you may even be the one directing what those guys with certificate are working in the industry. I hope I've made myself clear. So first have the passion, tell yourself that I cannot work in a place where people are injured. It, it, like me, part of what pains me the most is when I have to be in a team that is leading others to go and tell somebody's wife that your husband that has been working with us who came to work this morning uh, is not able to come to the house. And uh, not that the, he cannot come back, but because he died and he's in the mortuary, it has been very difficult. And I do it every now and then. Initially, when I started, I've been to a family that I tried to tell them, and they helped me as the person that killed the husband. But for the fact that we went with security personnel, you understand? So first, you have passion. If you have passion, what will happen is that even when you are employed as a director of the industry, you'll be thinking about personal safety and personal safety. So if you have the certification, HSC level one, two, and three, NEBOSH, IOSH, safety practitioner certificate, and all the likes, uh, uh, industrial hygienist, those certificates can help you to get employment. But you may have that certificate and it doesn't make sense. You are interested in making money. What makes sense is that you, you have to be passionate about saving life. Uh, one thing that Tuzan did for me, when he got that nomination from uh, my friend that I could make this presentation, when he spoke to me, I said, I like talking to people. One thing I do in my company when I make presentation like the one I finish by 12 o'clock, I tell them it pains me the most that I come to tell a group of uh, 22, 23, 28 people in SPE that the best way to prevent an accident analysis is to prevent that accident from happening. Then I leave here and hear that, sorry, the guy that just left your class has just had accident on the way back home. So it is one of the painful things that I've had to pass through. 
and, and it pains me a lot. That means I did not do much to stop him from getting to that level. So what happens is you need to have that passion. Then certification is secondary. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I have, I have another question. Thank so, sir, can you quickly you. go to your LEN slide, the L E A R N? Okay, LEN, LEN okay. That, that was slide three. Yeah, slide two. Okay, two. So, okay. you highlighted equipment, processes, and people as a key uh, component of factors, yeah, of the factors people getting that, injured. Injured. So I wanted to ask, what about yeah. um, natural occurrences? Let's say maybe earthquake or earthquake, something that we, so. ex, external things uh, that we really do not have control on. So when we are trying to analyze things like that, where, where exactly do we put them? Oh, okay. Uh, in the previous times in the early industries, uh, uh, external factors, that's what we call external factors, natural occurrences happen and we had no... Uh, uh, warning about it. Well, if you can remember, uh, is it the hurricane rodder and those all those hurricane? There are equipment today. Remember, equipment that can forewarn you that the people in California, uh, hurricane rodder or whatever is coming, evacuate, leave this place. So equipment, if those equipment is is not there to warn us off, that means we fail in having the best equipment or rather to give us the expected warning. Then that is one aspect. There are some people too that would think that like what I'm talking to you now can only happen in the industry. But I tell you, no, it can happen in your home. So what are the processes like in the case of uh, uh, September 11, 911 event, people were warned, leave this office but people were still staying there until they die. So what did you do additionally, which is the processes to tell people that, look, a hurricane is coming, make sure you leave before it comes. Then again, there are some people that will say, look, we heard about it in 2002. It never happened. This is 2020, it cannot happen. So these are the broad base for that happening. Now, external factor, things that can happen without us having control. If it does happen, it is, it is not going to be forever. For instance, in the world today, we already know areas that have been mapped for earthquake. West Africa, of uh, course, should have earthquake because of the drilling and uh, petroleum production uh, exercise that is going on. But sciences have said it is not prone to it. So if we wake up tomorrow and there's an earthquake in the West African shore, then it is an external factor and we'll manage it as it comes. But if by tomorrow, expert tells us that, look, everybody evacuates the Atlantic shores, there's earthquake coming in three months time. That means equipment is functional. But if that equipment fails to tell us there's an earthquake, that means there's a failure. And if in the industry, we never made any process or plans to say, look, in the event there's an earthquake, this is what we need to do to evacuate people. Because like I told us earlier on, it, it is people that are the most important. If anything should happen to the facility, the barge, the, the platform, the offices, we can get them back. But when somebody is gone, it is difficult to get them. Then why would you stay? You've been informed. We have been told what to do and you still want to wait because I love this job. Like I said, passion, because I want to stay. Uh, I, I want to be the last. I want to be the hero. I'm looking for promotion. I'm looking, I have the certification. So these are broad base of what can fail and an accident happen. The, the, uh, like I told us earlier on, accident are those things we have no control over. So external factor, natural occurrences, we don't have control over. But the things that we have control over, basically these three broad processes has to fail for something bad to happen. Thank you, thank you very much, sir, for that um, uh, response. So does, you, does anybody have any question? Or, or let me ask, did I meet your expectation for the answer? So I'm saying that okay. 
extend occurrences like that are things that we can term as accident. We have no okay. control over it. So when it happens, okay. we respond to it as it should be like the COVID-19. Uh, nobody predicted that COVID-19, it will come and we are going to stay from home from April till uh, September. But we are here. So we just responded, I have a Zoom, I do internet, do present. I, I have lectures for the past three days on our Zoom. So those are what we do. But we, uh, if it was to be that bad, that it become an incident, we are saying that we knew about COVID-19. We failed yeah. to use the equipment. We failed to do the processes. And I myself have become a victim because I've refused to follow the COVID-19 protocol. Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely explanation, sir. Thank, Thank you very sir. much. So any other question from anybody? Okay, so in the in the absence of any other questions, uh, Engineer Usaka, I'd just like you to give us your final remarks. I don't know if you have any last thing you want to share with us for about one or two minutes before before we end the, the program today. Okay, so uh, basically, when we talk about accident analysis and prevention, we are referring to investigating what happened. And I've said here that uh, what happened, somebody, uh, sorry, I have a, a chat here. Thank you, engineers. Okay, somebody has made the thank you message. Okay, all right. So we are basically saying that for us to analyze an accident, the very first step is that we prevent it from happening. So I refer to it as making safe choices. Uh, people, uh, let me put in the other parlance. People talk about marrying a bad wife. Uh, um, I have to bring this on because while I was in secondary school, my principal talked about marrying a bad wife. And he described a bad wife as a woman that you gave him, uh, sorry, if women are here, it's just for the purpose of analysis. That a bad wife is a woman that you gave her money in the morning and you left for work. And when you're coming back, she's yet to go to market <laughs> and you are terribly hungry. So the man told us we should be able to eat food outside before we return to the house. Uh, so that's on a lighter note. So what I'm saying is this, if you don't eat food before you return back to the house, you will see your wife as your enemy and probably you start beating him up. And when you beat a beating her up, you now already have an accident that you want to investigate or analyze. So the basic thing is this, you need to equip yourself with full knowledge. Before you get into that industry to do the work, find out things about the industry. It even helps us in our interview. Get to know about the industry you want to work for. Get to know about things they do and how it can be prevented and it can be improved. That equips us even in our interview to get employment. But for analyzing accident and investigating or preventing it from reoccurring, all you need to do is do your best to proactively think through what you want to do in your house, in your social, in your church, in your community. Ask yourself, what I'm going to do with it lead to any unforeseen circumstance or situation? And tell yourself, no, it will not before you can go in there. And if you do that, you've already analyzed the accident. So you've thought to, I'm going to drive a car, I'm not trained. Uh, if I drive a car, I understand that people that are driving for the first time can get accident. So let me go for training. I've gone for training. I'm back home. I have my certificate. I have been shown how to drive. I know how to drive. I've driven before. So I can go into that car and drive. Or I was trained to drive manual, but this one is auto. How do I drive auto? You get to learn about it before. You get to that uh, behind that wheel and uh, you're going on the road. It is an accident. It is only at that point that people will come and investigate and analyze what happened and come up with prevention strategies. So for you that is here today, always think through your aspect of life that you want to do. We have heard about getting certification and I've said certification is one way. I've had people that graduated with best degrees and as they came to work with me, they cannot put up a small PowerPoint presentation of cause and effect of what they are going to do or what happened in the industry. It becomes a big challenge as in where did they come from? So I've said that 
for you to do safety or to do analysis of what has happened, you need to have passion. And when you have passion, you have an open mind. So I charge us here today that for you to walk safe and live to that old age, please prevent issues from happening. It's like if you're a Christian like me, yeah, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if we can honor our father and our mother, we add years to our age. So if you can do these things proactively, you can always stay and live without having to go to analyze what happened in the industry. Thank you very much, Engineer Oswak. We, on behalf of the entire family, the entire SPNLAC family, and even people from other affiliations, we say a big thank you for taking out of your time to educate us on how to analyze accidents and most importantly, prevent them from happening even in the first place. So thank you very much for your time. So we really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, so for, thank for, you for the people, for the participants, I've launched a poll on how just to correct, collect feedback from everyone here. So I would like, I'd like us to quickly feel that. And in the chat section too, there is a Google form. Please fill that form to confirm participation uh, so that we can just, just for us to have uh, a record of all what we have done today. Uh, all what we have done today. How, what about such kids? Uh, fill the form, fill the form, fill the form. Just fill the form to confirm participation. We'll reach out to every one of us after, after the event. Okay, so uh, Tosin, thank you. Uh, I will try to send this slide to you so you can share with people for record purposes and uh, okay. yeah, that's, uh, that's, archiving. Thank then, you. Then, then you can check your settings on Zoom. You okay. can print out the attendance uh, list from the settings okay. report or be records. Okay. So you can have that to know those that are participated. Thank, thank you, you, team, and uh, remain safe. Remember, COVID-19 is real. Maintain social distances. Uh, 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 participate in uh, the protocol. If you are sick, get to the hospital to be tested before you start treatment yourself. Uh, Self medication is bad <laughs> and it can lead to an accident. So, uh, having said that, I want to thank the team once again. And I said that I am available again and again with good practices and preparation. I may be in to speak to us about other uh, salient. Uh, topic. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So that concludes our program for today. Uh, thank. I want to thank everybody again on behalf of the SP and the team and the industry discourse. Uh, that's TID. For those of us that do not know, the industry discourse is a symposium that was um, or that is that is um. Looking forward to you. Okay. The industry discourse is an initiative of uh, the Society of Petroleum Engineers, University of Lagos chapter. Uh, it's a symposium that we hold every single year. So we'll be having one again this year very soon. So this today's program was powered by both SPA Unilag and the industry discourse TID. Uh, I, I would like to appreciate every single person that has joined us today. You can also follow us on our, it's our social media platform so that you can get or you can be informed about our upcoming events. We have a whole lot in plan for everyone here and even those that are not here. Uh, so please and please, let's just, um, let's, let's, let's walk hand in hand to just make everybody the happiest they can be. So on this note, I'd like to just say thank you. Thank you for those of you asking for certificates, we'll reach out to you, do not worry. We'll reach out to you concerning the certificates. Uh, you can now leave the meeting. Thank you. God bless. You're welcome. Oh, so uh, lastly, the form sent is particularly for the certificate. The form sent. So if you have not filled that, I'm sorry, you will not be getting the form sent to the chat box. So there are just three questions, three fields to be filled. So quickly, quickly do that while you can before leaving. Thank you. <laughs>